Good morning, everyone. How are you today? It's your girl, Mayowa. It's HMT day three. So I'm coming to you live and direct before our camera man comes and show you live stream. So here we go. I'll be really quiet. Good morning and thank you for joining. And I love, I love learning. I love self-education. If you ask my children, my um, books everywhere, etc., etc. Anyway, so anyway, I was uh, researching on the internet. I can't remember how. Well, I you need to sit where Rochelle White is today. Rochelle White is from somewhere here. So I can't remember how I, I got onto Facebook. Anyway, I went onto Facebook and I I saw the, um, the post, somebody had posted the video. Um, Dr. Sadeda's video, joblessness is a blessing. And I was like, hang on a second. Wow, let me listen. So anyway, so I listened to the message and it was phenomenal. I had heard nothing like it before. I was I was mesmerized now thinking, but by the way, I had logged into Sunday early on in the year about two, three times and I just left it. But anyway. So I listened to the message and it was phenomenal. And I had, I had never heard that joblessness is a blessing all the time. Uh, joblessness seems to come with stigma, some form of stigma. You know, there was all this thing, you, you need to be in work. It kind of came with um, some prestige to be in work, but if you are not working, then you are classified as not um, a second class citizen. You know, it can be very subtle. It can be very subtle, very subtle, but very, um, anyway. So I was the most happiest person that day. I was so empowered. From that day, I started listening to the morning broadcast, which was 7.30, and the evening broadcast, which was 7 p.m. And I could not have enough of Dr. Sanandelada. I mean, everything was second or third. He was, well, as you know. So anyway, I was there. And I will not let anything else come between, and excuse me to say, not even my husband, because I had tapped into something that was really meeting the deepest part of me. The deepest part, the deep was calling of it, or the deep was meeting the deep inside of me. So anyway, I noticed that um, of all the years that I've been a Christian, I've never listened to a message where you can actually sense that your content is being filled up. You can actually sense that you're becoming stronger inside of you. As I've been a Christian for, for so many years, I've been to different churches, to conferences, etc., etc. But this one, I could feel. You know when they said um, um, somewhere in Ezekiel about the dry bones and, and all everything come together and everything rattling and the noise come. I could actually sense with inside of me that I was becoming stronger. So. I just could not get enough of Dr. Sanjay Delada. Anyway, so let's fast, fast forward. And then um, I think it was in October, um, Dr. Sunday did a teaching called You Are Not an Afterthought, You Are Not an Accident. And he talked about the fact how um, we are all special, we're all unique, we've got something, each and every one has got something very unique about us. And, um, and especially to do with our set births, um, uh, the bad things that happened to us, the ugliness, the pain, the sorrow, all those, the dark side that, the things that have happened in our life, actually those are the very things that God wants to use as a platform to go and minister and reach out the world. So everyone has got a story, every one of us has got a story, and that in, in simplicity or in summary, we should all go out and share our story, whether it be for, through Facebook Live, whether it be through a blog, whether it be through writing a book, whether it be doing your own video, but whatever, just go out there and start. And you know, even though I've heard this kind of message before, it was the way, I keep on saying, there's a way that Dr. Sunday teaches that empowers. There's a way that he teaches that gives you the confidence to take that step. Because, and you know, um, all the messages, I mean, you, you hear messages time and time again, and you hear it, you get emotionally stimulated for a while, and then once 
you go back to your homes and you know the, the, the pressures of life and um, trials of life come to you, then you just kind of abandon it. But there's something about him that the way he teaches just said, okay, let me just take this step out. Even if it's one, I will take that step. So anyway, so that, that day I said, oh, okay. Now, I must be honest with you. I must be honest with you. I was thinking of public opinion. What are people going to say when I start sharing my story, when I start sharing the ugliness, when I start sharing the messiness, when I start opening the can of worms? What are going to people say? What are the pastors going to say? What are the church people going to say? Especially the church people, you know, what they're going to say. So I was kind of like um, holding back a little bit, and a lot of, you know, a lot of things going in my mind. Am I going to deal with this? So, but you know what? I said, Anastasia, just obey the word that is coming for <coughs> Then to, start, to cut a long story short, it was, um, it was uh, the first, I think the first week in November, it was a Sunday, I was sitting on my bed, I don't know what overtook me, I quickly designed a poster um, and, and put it out there and said, I'm going to start my, um, my life story series, which was the 19th of November. Now, as soon as I posted it on Facebook, I, asked, I, I said to myself, oh my goodness, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? You've committed yourself. There's no, there's no turning back. And I thought, oh, there's no way I can withdraw this. There's no way I can withdraw this. So, now, bear in mind, I've never done Facebook Live. I don't know the technicalities. I don't know all the modalities. I don't know nothing about Facebook Live. So, I think, I remember, if, for those of you who, you know, from the beginning, I did some few small brief testing. <laughs> it was not testing, of course, I was scared. I was just, you know. Anyway, so, so the 19th came, set the stuff off this. I never knew there was so much involved in your Facebook Live. You know, you're the camera woman, you're the technician, you're the wardrobe assistant, you're the research assistant, you're everything all in one. But anyway, I took that bold step. And I began to uh, to share my life story. If you if you if you uh, view the first one, you can tell that this person was a very green person. I was nervous, but I began to share my story. And um, because of time, but um, so my life is made of three chapters, three main chapters: zero to nine, nine to twenty-seven, twenty-seven to fifty, fifty-three. At the time I was doing it, and I began to do the series and actually open up and share. And it was so liberating. It was so empowering because then I began to see, um, as much as there's a lot of pain in my story, I began to see the hand of God as well. Um, um, and especially when people logged on and later on after, you know, after the replays, I would check and see other people had, had viewed. So that, you know, encouraged me. And when I look back, as I was doing this series, I thought, what kind of mentor can, that gives you the, um, how do you call it, the confidence and the, the courage to say, because don't, don't forget this time, I'm 50, 53, 53, and I'm thinking, why, why at the age of 53 am I now, you know, stepping out to do stuff? I could have done this thing ages ago, but the real thing is, is the mentor. The mentor. I've never had a mentor before. I've never had a mentor. That day that I prayed that prayer, God answered in the form of Dr. Sandy Adelaide. And I always call Daddy Jehovah Sneaky because he has this kind of way that he does. He does a very, when I sneaky, that's not, I mean, that's a very playful way. I think, you know. So he has this way of kind of connecting you into your destiny that is not straight, but before you know it, you're there. Anyway, so. So I started the life, uh, my life story series, and I finished those ones, and then I came for the HMT. It's all about the HMT. <laughs> I came, uh, so I came to Cape um, in January, and um, the HMT just opened my eyes to another level of uh, experience. Experiencing fatherhood. I go and agree with you. Maybe after our story. Mm -hmm. Experiencing the, the love of God, the presence of God, 
the love of the family, the kingdom. Actually, it was the first time I understood what the kingdom was all about. I knew what church was. I certainly knew what church was. But the kingdom, I had no idea. The, the first, well, when I came here, I just knew something was different. I just felt at home. I felt as if this, I, I don't know. I felt as if I had um, been here forever. This is my home. I was just coming home. And I've never felt that before. I never experienced that before. And like I said yesterday, when I shared this with Dr. Sunday, he said, because I had entered the kingdom. And so, obviously, I learned to do some hard work, um, the HMT, learning new, new lessons, um, the uh, homework, which was very tough on me. Now, it was very tough, and I'm going to be honest with you, um, my education experience has been really, 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 really difficult. Like I said, because of what happened in childhood, I had very negative um, negative issues about myself, I didn't love myself, I thought that I was uh, I was dumb, I was this, I was that, so as a matter of fact, when I was coming and I, I realized we're going to be doing an assignment, I was really, really nervous, I was really, because it was kind of like triggering memories from my past, but I was determined, you know, to take that hurdle, even, even today, I'm going to be honest Yeah, everybody's that. experiencing the same thing you experienced now. <laughs> Since nobody read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, once again, uh, yeah. So, uh, the HMT spirit was lovely. And then when, we, when I went back home, I started, started teaching the Kingdom series. Oh my goodness, the Kingdom series. If any one of you have not listened to his Kingdom series, or got the book, the Kingdom Most people have not listened to the Kingdom you series, need to but really it's the best. It is the best. If you want to understand... As a child of God, you need to understand your role, your place in the kingdom. It's just like you being uh, um, a child of your parents and you don't know where your home is. And you don't know all the intricacies, all the beautifulness and all the, the principles. It's just like, like, like you don't know at home. So please go and listen to the kingdom series and buy the Kingdom Driven Life book. Take your time to study it. It's, it just made me more aware of who I am, aware of who I am and what my place is in the kingdom. So, um, so after he, he taught on the series of the kingdom, and he asked us to, to go out there, he said, we are glory carriers. We are glory carriers. We are kingdom. We were, we, we were made in the image of what we're supposed to reflect our father. And, um, you know, the enemy has done half a war on one, and he wants, us, he, wants his, he wants his kingdom back. And he puts a little bit of himself in every one of us. So in, every one of us has a promised land and... Um, and he's put uh, gifts, talents, and abilities that um, pertain to the things that he's called you to do. So when you, when you, um, when you pay attention to your, your desires or your inclinations, the things that set you I know for a long time I've wanted to do a talk show. Now, for those of you, I keep on saying, if you haven't watched my life story, so you won't understand, because I did not talk. I didn't talk. My mom would have to beg me. She would say to me, please, my daughter, open your mouth and talk. That's what she would say to me. So it is hilarious for God to put that desire for me to start a talk show. It does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. You know, our daddy, he does these things. So it just doesn't make sense. Anyway, so that desire had been there. So after the kingdom series, and being charged as being glory carriers and bringing uh, the, the, the kingdom back to the lordship, I said, you know what, I'm going to take that step. I don't know. I don't know how to do talk show. I don't know anything. I haven't. I didn't do journalism. I've never worked in a radio station. I've never worked in any place. But you know what? With the little that I can, I'm gonna start. Now, because of my background, I sense that God has been has called me to uh, to speak to the issues of of those who grew up without a daddy, which is very huge. To speak to people who grew up, who grew up without a daddy, and you know it comes with a, if you just watch them, you know it comes up with a lot of issues. So that was one part, one of um, what I felt the Lord telling me. That was one, and then two, by doing this, He want me to lead them back to Him, to, to lead the, these people to experience the Father. So twofold. And so, oh my goodness, I, I remember that day, set up everything, my mobile phones, <coughs> stuck with uh, blue tack to the wall, 
And um, you know how it does. You press um, live and it goes three, two, one. And I just, I just started. I just started and I don't know, for strange reasons, somebody who's been so shy and so withdrawn and so intimidated, I've noticed that every time I go on the camera, I seem to come alive. I don't know, as, and I don't understand. I'm thinking the enemy is a bad, bad devil. Yeah. He's a really bad devil because he mainly believed that, you know, I was nobody, that I had nothing to give, that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm worthless. But actually, I'm discovering more and more as I listen to Dr. Sandai Delida and I take the step. You know, all you need to do is take that first step and the rest will happen. Do I know how to do talk shows? I'm, I'm still naive, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning, I learn as I go. And, you know, I notice I have to do research. Um, as uh, Dr. Sandai teaching us, you know, you must have facts, you must have concepts, you must have theories. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. One day I sat down and I thought, oh my goodness, what have I let myself into? <laughs> what have I let myself into? I think it was the, the last but two, so that was after I had you know, come off, signed off, and I went, oh my goodness. Daddy, this is humongous. Fatherless, do you know fatherlessness is a global issue? Yeah. How can I solve a global, look at me, I mean, look, look at me. How can I solve a, a, a global issue? But then I'm, I'm encouraged by the story of Deborah. Deborah was a woman. She was a judge. She was a prophetess. They, she, she rose up in a time that when there was so much chaos in Israel and said, you know what? I'm going to sort out this problem. The men didn't rise up. <coughs> and so she's kind of my, my what do you call it? After the person, and then she's my mirror. And she's one I, I used to encourage myself that if, if God can use Deborah to bring solutions to a whole village or nation, whatever it is, then he can use me. And so here I am today, I am a talk show host. <laughs> and I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud because I'm representing the fact that God is real and that he is alive and that he loves people. He loves to heal, to restore, to redeem, to beautify. He loves to, 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 to make beauty out of ashes. So for all those people out there who think they, they've got nothing to, nothing to give, that they're worthless, that the enemy has stolen their image, you know, their, their pride, the very essence of being, I'm here as a solution provider. Amen. I'm here. I may not know much, but I'm on my way. Every okay. day. This thing you are saying now is going to be my next point. Don't go away. But who can remind us of the two points that we exactly why people are not great in the kingdom of God, why Christians are not great? Why? No model God. Yeah. We rather appraise God or preach, talk about him as the great one, as the one who is capable of doing something. Which is making us to automatically want to just go and take it and use it and take something rather than to emulate it. So, so that's a big difference. Now, the third thing I wanted to talk about why people are not great, why Christians are not great. That would be a, a, talking of a good book. Why Christians are not great? <laughs> uh, another uh, factor which I'm going to talk about is what your testimony is giving us in church. And is the fact that Christians are not living daily their life from the point of view, or is it sense, or point of view that they are here to fulfill the calling that she is doing now. So she is not bothered uh, on 
about anything. Even husband, family, you know, uh, because you know, in Christianity we always say God first, family second, ministry. But normally, nobody really, everybody just knows what they want. But when you are totally in love with God, and when you are aware that He is your priority, and you are here with a sense of calling, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Christians, for you to make a difference in the world, you've got to live your life with a sense of calling on a daily basis that I'm here to fulfill a purpose. I'm here on an assignment. I'm here on a mission from God. So that's what you could tell in all the stories of Anastasia. But she said she was never like that before. She was timid. She was quiet. Uh, she was 30 years in Christianity, but she never dreaming. So what do we have? What is the opposite of that? What is obtainable in the life of Christians? Instead of living with a sense of, with a daily sense of purpose, what do Christians do? Christians live with an urgent, uh, with a sense of an urgent need to survive. Or make a living. So the need to make a living and survive has actually overthrown the sense of purpose. But you know what not listening to you, we are seeing a model of a Christian life that is absolutely consumed by the purposes of God. And that's supposed to be the way every Christian life is supposed to be all. So, yeah, if you see, have anything more to say? Um, so, just to let you know that it is, it is not easy. Just because um, you've discovered your purpose doesn't mean that it's going to be a bed of roses. There's a lot of hard work. There is a lot of hard work that goes into. By the time I sit behind that camera, so much does go into it. A lot, and I'm still, you know, I do a lot of research, as some, our mentor has taught us, and I find myself, you know, going to deep waters. So, reading about stuff that I've never, you know, never, never, never touched on. At the last one, I, I think I talked about yeah, imagine. people living on Earth like this, and she said she never did research, she never touched on the psychology you just of stuff. How people live, you know, do I'm, I'm opening. Uh, psychology research stuff on the internet and I've got different tabs that I've, I've uh, pinned you know you can pin your tabs on Google yeah, yeah. So get different uh, pin uh, sorry different tabs that I've pinned over with all these research I need to read so by the time I come to you I've done a lot of research so and I'm not a psychologist I'm not a, I'm not a certified I'm not a psychologist I'm not a counselor I don't have any of that but, but I'm I'm going to get into to get the authentic authentication. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Authority, yeah. So that's what I do. I'm I'm I'm, I'm at the deep end. I'm I'm not. It's not that I've done a degree in any of these areas, psychology, counseling. I don't have any of that background. But the fact that I take and it's, it can be very intimidating and overwhelming. I guess God Fine. has. I guess God has designed it that way so so that I will rely heavily on Him. Amen. Rely heavily on Him, you know, because I think that if Actually, I had if I had those close, if I had all those background, I think I'll be more relaxed. I'll, I'll be like you know, I, I know it, but because I don't know, I'm relying more, and I ask Him to help me and to do it in a way that. Um, Actually, it's very frightening. Even though I might get all my points, all my research points, but then when I'm, once the camera is on, I'm thinking, oh Lord, I hope I'm speaking intelligibly. I hope your, the message is coming across. I hope I'm delivering solutions and all that. And every week, I'll, 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 I'll um, be honest with you, five minutes to the time when um, it goes live, my heart is just beating like this. <laughs> and so I'll be finding myself, I'll be doing breathing, I say, keep cool. 
Keep going. I'm, I'm just sharing you. So anytime I love you, know that I've been finding myself very, very well because I'm so, you know. So this is my story. This is how far I've only been, um, like I said, August. How many months is that? August to date. It's just been a very short, and I see myself doing exploits. Meanwhile, I've been a Christian for 30 years. I've never done anything. I feel like um, I'm taking leaps, and quantum leaps as a word, yeah, taking quantum leaps, uh, this acceleration happening in my life, and becoming, I'm discovering more who God has called. Can you, can you tell how I'm talking? Somebody who never talked. I know that uh, that shy inclination is still with me. Yeah, I mean, I still have it. But um, when you put me there to, to talk, I hope I'm speaking intelli intelligently to it all of them. But here is somebody who didn't know how to talk and felt that she was dumb, stupid, and didn't have anything to offer. So this is to encourage all of you out there that is a big lie. Thank you.